This is going to be a tutorial on how to upgrade a mid-2009 uh, 20-inch iMac. Its model number is A1224 and its EMC number is 2316. You can easily check your iMac model number and EMC number by taking your iMac and laying it down on the table and looking at the bottom of the base plate. Now other iMacs can have this same upgrade done to them. This is just the one iMac that's particular to our school system. Now the situation is the iMacs are now very dated and they're no longer working well. And usually the fix would be to buy a Chrome base. Well, to buy a Chrome base is about $450. If we take this iMac apart and we install an SSD and upgrade the RAM and install Cloud Ready, which is a Chrome build, which turns it into a Chrome base, we'll save thousands of dollars by simply paying $80 to upgrade a computer. So for every iMac, that we upgrade, we're getting six computers out of the same amount of money if we bought one Chrome base for the classroom. They'll perform equally well, and this will save your school system thousands of dollars. The first step is to lay the iMac down on its back and take out a suction cup tool that I'll have a link to in the video description. And you're going to easily lift on the top part of the glass and support the back and lift up evenly on the glass because if you don't, you'll either break the metal pins or shatter the glass. Now that we have um, the LCD panel exposed, you can see that there are screws uh, that go all around the frame. Now what you're going to want to do is separate the screws into do different piles. You see I have uh, the bottom frame that's up here that are longer screws, and I have the uh, shorter screws that go around the sides and the top. Just make sure you separate these screws into two different um, piles so that you don't mix them up. You're going to take a T10 bit, and it's a Torx bit, and you're going to work around the screen unscrewing each screw. Make sure that you're supporting the tip of the screwdriver while you unscrew each screw on the iMac. This will ensure that you don't make any mistakes and accidentally um, slip and scratch the screen or drop the screwdriver onto the LCD panel. This will protect the computer, and it's a little pro tip when working on computers. Now I'm going to remove the memory from the computer and I'm going to show you where the RAM is located. On the underneath of the faceplate you can see there's a little screw in the middle. Now it's a special bit, it's actually an X bit and I'll have a link to this bit uh, in the video description. You're going to unscrew uh, the center screw and then you may not be able to get the plate off so I usually use um, like a flat blade uh, to pry it out. Um, sometimes you will need this blade, sometimes you will not. But what you'll do is you'll work it into the groove uh, until the plate begins to come out and once it fully pops out you can remove this plate. Now you'll see it's very dirty in there um, and I'm going to show you how to take a computer cleaner and blow out all the dust. But what you do next is you pull the tape um, with your finger outward and then pull the tape towards you and you can pull out the ram. So you'll see I'll kind of flick and pull out that tape and then I'll pull it straight towards me and remove uh, the RAM from the computer. Now sometimes it's very difficult um, and it's hard to pull out. You'll notice that you may need to change your positioning and angle and then you should be able to pull out the RAM and get it out of the computer. Now what you could do um, is later just keep watching the tutorial and take the whole computer apart and then do this process because it might be a little bit easier um, but it can totally be done right now like I'm showing you. You're going to take your upgraded RAM and I'll have a link in the video to the RAM I'm showing you and you're going to install two 4 gig RAM modules into the computer. Now that I have the RAM out of the package I'm going to take the RAM and put it in the computer. Now you'll note um, that when you put the RAM in you want to put the small side on the left and the large side on the right. And you'll see I'll slide it into the tray and then I'll push with my thumb until it clicks. And then I'll take the ribbon and tuck it back in underneath the RAM. If your computer, by the way, beeps randomly uh, after you put it all back together, most likely the RAM is not all the way in the slot. So I'm going to take the other module, push it in, and tuck the ribbon back underneath it. And now I'm ready to move on to the next step. Now you want to gently put your thumb on the foam on each side with your thumb and pull on the panel with your index fingers 
until it pops out. Now there is a microphone cable at the top that we're going to have to disconnect. Next, you're going to have to disconnect the microphone cable by holding on the black cable and pulling on the tape, and that should separate your microphone cable. And then you're going to grab um, on both sides of the faceplate and gently pull it towards you to remove it. Now you can see at the bottom of the computer, we can see the logic board and you can also see the two RAM modules we replaced. Now this is where you could replace it at this time if the other part was hard. I just showed you the airport or the wireless chipset. That's your fan and speakers. Uh, and again, that's your CMOS battery if you need to clear it. And that is the main logic board. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna use a computer cleaner and I'll have a link to it on the video description. You wanna work it slowly over the components, but be careful not to blow too much on a certain component because um, you might break it. Notice you're gonna to wanna to blow into the CPU fan to get out all the dust particles in the computer. You just wanna be patient and work it across the computer. Next, you're going to remove the eight screws holding the LCD panel in place. Now, I found the T10 bit worked, and I originally thought it was a T8, um, but you can be safe and have a T10 and T8 bit um, in your possession. Now, you're going to want to make sure you put these uh, screws in their own separate pile since they are only used for this panel. When you put it back together, remember to put it in the hole that is surrounded by metal uh, so that you don't accidentally put it in the wrong hole um, when you put them back together. Now you're going to want to gently pull with your fingernails on the top part of the screen and pull it forward. Be careful not to pull too hard. There are actual cables inside that you might pull out. You're going to take your computer cleaner and you're going to hold the screen open a little bit. And you're going to take the cleaner and work inside the computer blowing out all the dust that's inside. Remember this computer has been sealed for nine years, so it's pretty nasty inside the computer. Make sure you don't breathe in any of the fumes or dust particles and you're just going to want to work around the whole computer again making sure everything is clean um, so that when you put the new hard drive in it's good to go. Now before you can use the SSD for the computer you're going to need to use disk format on a Windows computer and when you get there make sure you select MBR uh, and then you hit OK. What you're going to do is go to each um, SSD that you're preparing for the iMac and you're going to want to do a new simple volume so you're going to right click, do new simple volume, and then what you're going to do is unassign a letter and you're going to actually select XFAT and hit next and finish. And you'll basically partition or create an SSD that can work in an iMac. If you don't do this step, the SSD might not work when you install Cloud Ready or any other operating system onto the SSD. So right now I actually have four SSDs uh, connected to my computer and I'm going to um, get them all ready to be used in the IMAX that students are working on. And after you finish this process, simply turn off your computer and disconnect your SSDs from the SATA cable and SATA power cable. Now what you're going to want to do is get above the computer and have a partner or someone else hold the screen for you. Loosen up the cables without pulling them out. You'll notice that there are two cables for the screen at the top and two at the bottom. We don't want to lose those. That's your exposed power supply. Never have your computer plugged in. It will cook you. Um, so make sure no power is in there. That was the hard drive I pointed to in the CD drive. Now these are the sensor cables. You have to be extra careful not to pull these out because if you pull them out, uh, the computer will turn the fans on blast. So what we're going to do is come into the computer and work out the sensor that's stuck on the back of the hard drive and remove it from the back of the hard drive. It's just held in by sticky tape. Um, once you remove it, you're going to place it to the side um, so it's safe and tucked away. Once you've got the cables out of the way, you're going to want to pull on this lever on the top. And when you pull on it towards you, it should loosen the hard drive to be removable. If the hard drive doesn't come out easily, you can unscrew the two screws on the top um, and loosen it up more. So it looks like I'm going to have to do that uh, in the video. So what I'm going to do is take my screwdriver with the same T10 bit and loosen up the screws on the top tray. And then after I've loosened up the screws, I'm going to pull the hard drive towards me. Now I recommend at this point you put a glove on your left hand because I have scratched my knuckles um, severely uh, from the power supply when I removed the SATA cables. Now when you lift up the hard drive, you're going to pull out the SATA data cable and the SATA power cable. Uh, to remove your mechanical drive from the computer. Now this drive is nine years old 
and it will slow the computer down. You pretty much have to reformat it every other year to keep the computer running. Now I'm going to install a Kingston SSD, 120 gigabyte SSD, and I'm going to show you how to put it at this time. You're going to want to flip it over backwards like so, and you're going to want to put the data cable back into it and the SATA power cable back into it. Once you have the cables attached, you're going to put the SSD neatly in the position where the mechanical drive is, and then you're going to rock your LCD panel um, back together. Now you want to remove that plastic piece so it's not floating around inside, and you want to make sure that no cables were removed and everything fits like it should. Now you're going to want to put all the screws back in uh, where they came from, and right now I'm going to put back the LCD panel. Now if the screw holes don't line up, you can gently push forward on the bottom right corner and get them to line up. Uh, and then you should be able to screw the screws back in. Now when you put in the faceplate, go from the bottom and then uh, cut with scissors the tape so you can um, attach the microphone cable back to the cable at the top of the computer. You want to make sure it comes back together and you want to screw in the screws um, for the faceplate. Remember, the large screws go on the bottom four holes, and all the other screws uh, are going to be the small screws that you took out previously. Now you're going to want to take a microfiber cloth and some cleaner and just gently, gently wipe the LCD panel. We don't want to push hard. We just want to be gentle. Now you also want to blow off the LCD panel with the computer cleaner. Uh, that way it will help remove any dust um, from the screen. You're also going to do this right before you put the glass plate back on so that there's no dust that has statically connected to the screen before you put the glass protector back on. Now you'll just kind of gently work around the uh, LCD panel making sure there's no smudges. And you might want to use the other side of the uh, microfiber cloth um, so that you can remove some of the cleaner. Now this is just a very tedious step, but please be patient. You're then going to do the same process to the glass plate that you removed. You're going to clean just the inside uh, first. Uh, please make sure you hold in the middle of the glass um, so that you don't actually uh, bend or break the glass plate when you're cleaning it. You're just going to work the microfiber cloth all around it. And then after you've cleaned it, you're going to blow off the LCD screen. And then you're going to let the magnets reattach uh, the screen to it. You're going to take the suction cup off and then you're going to again clean the screen from the outside uh, until it's clean and complete. Now after you clean the screen what you're going to want to do is remove any tape from the bottom of the iMac um, and then you're going to take your microfiber cloth and you're going to Windex the uh, computer panel and clean the faceplate with the microfiber cloth. Now you're going to take your cloud ready boot drive and you're going to insert it into the back of the iMac USB slot. After you've inserted it, what you're going to do is hold the Alt key down on the Windows keyboard, or I believe it's the Option key on a Mac keyboard. You're going to boot up the computer and hold this button down until you see the EFI boot option on the screen. It'll come up in a second, and you will see the USB. Drive. Now you're going to bring your mouse over to it, left click on it, and now the computer is going to boot up into Cloud Ready. It'll take about a minute for Cloud Ready to boot up, and then once it boots up, you're going to see in the bottom right corner with the mouse, you can click on the settings, install Cloud Ready, and then you're going to click install Cloud Ready again and erase and format the hard drive on the computer. Now this process will take several minutes to complete. When the computer screen is completely black and the USB is no longer flashing, you're going to remove it. You're then going to hold the Windows key, Alt, P, and R keys at the same time. And or on a Mac, it's the Option Command PR keys. While holding the keys, you're going to boot the computer and you'll see the computer turn on. And while holding the keys down, you'll see it turn back off and make another sound. What you're doing is resetting the PRAM so that the logic board will accept the new SSD. When it boots up the second time, you let go of the keys, and the computer should boot up right into Cloud Ready um, or Neverwhere. Now you can see in the video that I'm not fast forwarding it and that the computer actually starts really fast, and within a few seconds, you'll be in the new Chrome build on the iMac. Now you're good to go, and the computer is ready to be used by students and teachers, 
and you saved hundreds and hundreds of dollars by spending just a few dollars on components.